In case you missed my recent video on the GFX50R, I shared in that video that I bought a used GFX100S along with a used 45 f2.8. I'm not necessarily sold on the GFX system, my goal was to rent or loan cameras for a little bit and just try out a number of different systems first. However, I knew if I didn't love this system, I could easily sell it and get back what I paid, so I figured it was worth a shot. I can't really see myself using anything at like a higher price or higher specs or val- I mean, this is like the most overkill by far in terms of having resolution that big but it's also really versatile it's it's complicated it's nuanced i've got a ton of notes in front of me this is by no means a review or anything like that this camera has been out for a long time now you all know what it's capable of this is still very very early impressions of this camera i need to spend a lot of time with it before i decide whether or not i'm going to be keeping it but i still have plenty of thoughts and photos and things i'd like to share so big thanks to square space for sponsoring this video we'll talk more about them in just a little bit but first things first let's go over the last month of photos and moments with this camera The day the GFX arrived, I took it to a local farm just a couple miles from where I grew up, and I spent that whole evening walking around the pasture with my friend Ben. So using the 100S in a setting like this day one was a really good way for me to see just how I adapted to it kind of right out of the gate, and the first thing I did was switch the EVF to the monochrome film simulation just so I could see everything in monochrome. And as much as I love an optical viewfinder, as much as I love looking at the ground glass and looking through some kind of prism where I'm really seeing through the lens, the way I can see in monochrome uh, using an EVF like this, not just the GFX 100S, but just any digital camera with an EVF seeing in monochrome, eliminating the distraction where I don't have to think about the pre-visualization and I can actually see how things are going to be rendered in black and white. Um, it's just allowed me to focus so much more on what's in front of me rather than, uh, you know, all of the back and forth in my head. So that's been really, really nice to shoot with. Using the camera at home, uh, treating it like it's just your everyday camera that you're going to carry everywhere. That's not really my intention with this camera. I don't expect to just take this with me everywhere and it be the one camera, the one size fits all, you know. I don't really think there's any camera that's necessarily going to be the one size fits all for me, at least not yet. But I do like seeing just how a camera like this handles situations. I'm already using it in way more situations I would ever use the Pentax 672 in, and that's what I'm most specifically interested in when it comes to a digital camera. If I'm going to be using it more than I'm grabbing my film camera, that's a win for me, because if I'm actually using the camera, that's what it's about. Just walking around and shooting freely with a camera like this that's this capable with files this big, like over 200 megabytes per file, uh, the resolution on this thing, these are huge files. So you need to make sure your computer can handle it and you need to make sure that you have enough storage to be able to accommodate that many photos, especially if you're gonna be using it a lot. YouTube always does a pretty fantastic job compressing these files in these videos, so if you want to actually look at these just as pictures, I'm going to put a link down below. You can see these in better detail over on my site, mattdayphoto.com, which you know was made by today's sponsor, Squarespace. Long before they ever sponsored this channel, I launched mattdayphoto.com with Squarespace because it's the best all-in-one place to build a website. No matter what you're looking for or what your business is, there are so many templates to choose from on Squarespace and anybody can customize it to fit their own style. Everything is drag and drop, you can get your site running by yourself in no time, and if you ever need help with anything, Squarespace has 24-7 award-winning customer service that's always there to help. You can let your work speak for itself with galleries, run an online blog, even send out a newsletter, or sell your own products, whether it be digital or physical, through an online store built right in. Everything you need is right there to get started, so go to squarespace.com slash mattday before you launch your site. That's going to make sure you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for all of your support here on the channel. 
Let's break this camera down and start getting into the details. The body is without a doubt a bigger, chunkier DSLR style both in size and just how it feels in the hand. Now a film shooter might look at this camera and go, well, hold on a second, Fuji, where's your dials? That's, that's not gonna look as good on Instagram. From an actual practical standpoint, I think the camera is really easy to use in the hand. It's just so comfortable and the grip is nice, and I don't mind using the front or rear dials for the shutter speed or the aperture. Uh, I do, however, wish the buttons were just a little bit more pronounced or had some sort of marking or, you know, feeling to them. They're just a little bit too, like, flat and low profile, almost flush, and uh, just some of the custom buttons on the back. It's nothing like, you know, make or break about the camera. Just the little details about the buttons. I just wish the buttons were a little bit more pronounced and it'd be easier to use without taking the camera away from my eye. Probably just takes more muscle memory. In all honesty, it's probably not that big of a deal. Now the lenses in the GFX line are also big and chunky, just like the camera bodies, but they obviously need to be a certain size in order to accommodate that sensor, as well as having autofocus elements. As big as the camera and lenses are, they are still not that big compared to the Pentax 672, so really this isn't a big deal. But if you really want to strip the camera down, adapting the M-mount lenses like I mentioned in the 50R, my 50 f1.4 Sumalux, this is more like a 40mm equivalent, and using this on the 100S has been a dream. But the flexibility of having these AF lenses when I want them, or being able to adapt anything I really want to this sensor, whether it be film medium format, digital medium format, 35, I mean, that's just, you can adapt so much to this sensor, and uh, just the possibilities of that alone, I've been thinking so much more about the end result at the end of the day, like that is what is most important, and with film cameras especially, like the Pentax 672, I have so much like sentimental feelings towards that camera, and uh, just that process of film in general, like it's a very romantic thing, and I think tying up a lot of that and those feelings in the camera body specifically. That's something I've done way more than I ever should. Uh, I think most film photographers could probably relate to that. And with this camera, I just kind of treat it for what it is, like it's just a big sensor just there to gather light. And so how different is it really going to look at the end of the day, whether I shoot it on a Pentax 672 or a GFX or an X100V? I mean, can you really tell a difference in the end result, depending on what that end result is. Like for me, making prints and books, is it really gonna translate that differently? Uh, no, I, I really don't think so. We're gonna find out in a video soon, actually, but I really don't think it makes that big of a difference. I think it really is just gonna come down to what you enjoy the most and uh, you know what kind of stays out of the way and, and lets you focus on the work. One month in the GFX 100S, it's been a lot of fun to shoot with and it's definitely delivered on the results. I would love to hear your own thoughts on the camera, the photos, this video in general. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments down below. Thank you all so, so much for watching this video and sticking with me. I love you all very much, and I will see you guys soon.